an awakening. Have you felt it? Now our segment on something you rarely hear about here in Washington, solutions to big problems. As always, we have two top voices from different sides of an issue, and we'll use this segment in hopes of pushing towards some progress. Today, we're talking about a brand new report exposing the shocking number of foreigners who illegally overstay their travel visas here in the U.S. This is a very alarming report. Uh, it confirms what we've been suspicious of for a long time. We've had at least five different passages of laws that says a person needs to be clocked out of the country just as they're clocked into the country so we know who overstayed their visas when they come here. What this report says is that in 2014 alone, one year, 400,000 plus people overstayed their visas. That's GOP Senator Jeff Sessions who has been talking quite a bit about this problem and held a hearing this week. So is there any common ground to find some solutions on this? Let's ask Fox News contributors Rick Grinnell and Santita Jackson. Good to see you both. Good to I see, see you. you. All right, Santita, <laughs> I'll start with you. I mean, this is a report that Congress has been pushing DHS for for years. They finally got mm -hmm. the first of its kind report, and we find out more than 400,000 people in one year overstayed their visas. And Congress said, you know, there were some hints from Democrats and Republicans alike thinking, we didn't get this information because DHS knows how bad it is. Well, you know, I think the good news is that DHS, the Department of Homeland Security, has been doing such a good job. What the report doesn't tell us, or what that report didn't tell us, was that 45 million people come to the United States. So little more than 1% overstayed their visas. But in a time of anxiety and insecurity, well, great is not good enough. I mean, that's a little bit more than 1%. So what we have to do is figure out how we can get to 100% without sacrificing our liberty for security. Yeah, it's a tricky balance. And Rick, since 2004, mm -hmm. the law has required that uh, DHS come up with some kind of format that the government find a way to track people. Here we are, 2016 now, and Rick, still, they haven't figured out a way to do it, even though they're required by law. Yeah, and we know how to do this. I mean, we have the technology to follow someone from the moment they come into the United States on a visa. Eventually what's happening is that we are being led bit by bit through, to use the Skinnerian term, from shaping through the successive approximation to ultimately having within our bodies an RFID chip that will be implanted that people will stand in line and in queues for it to have so that ultimately we will have in our bodies because what we're doing right now Lindsay is we're slowly moving towards that we went from the desktop to the laptop to the phone to the watch and now we're having little tats tattoos little biometrics all of them leading to the ultimate goal and that is an RFID, a radio frequency identification or similar chip to be placed subcutaneously. And that chip, Lindsay, will have everything about you there is. Your bank account, your GPS location, and you will do it. You will get one because after all, it will also have the siren call of medical information. And then one day, God forbid, not you, one day when people are found guilty of, let's say, crimes, they're not going to be put into a, the who's gal, in the pokey. No, their chip is going to be turned off and poof, they don't exist anymore. That's where all of this is going. So look, we want to be welcoming. I think Santita is right. We want to be a country that, that says, come visit have a, a, a great time when you come here, whether it's an immigrant or non-immigrant visa. We have requirements like every other country, but mm -hmm. we need to be able to enforce the laws. Simply finding people uh, on the day that they overstay their visa and getting them to mm -hmm. leave, I don't think is too much. You have to have rules, otherwise it's gonna be chaos. Everybody wants to come to the United States. We've gotta set boundaries. 
Uh, and Santita, mm -hmm. when pressed, I mean, there were ICE officials, DHS officials, uh, at least one who acknowledged the government is not tracking these people. You can't track 400,000 plus people. Mm -hmm. Uh, so unless they commit some kind of serious crime, they're not even on the government's radar for being here on an overstay. What is your bottom line? Because it seems we all agree there is a problem. Well, bottom line, I don't want to put people in ankle bracelets and put chips on them. What I want us to do is figure out whether people are coming to vacation or if we've got runaways, refugees, because that will determine why people are here. At the end of the day, Ben Franklin told us a couple of hundred years ago that if we sacrifice our liberty for security, we'll deserve neither. So we've got to come together and combine technological know-how, but not let technology overwhelm us so that it's controlling us. We need to control it. And Rick, as to that technology, uh, there are those uh, within the government who testified this week saying we've tried to do this. It would cause massive backups at airports where people are departing the country, and it's super expensive. So even if we have the technology, these guys say it can't work. So what's your bottom line? Look, it's a privilege to come to this country. It's not a right. It's a privilege, and we have to be able to enforce the rules. We have the technology, Shannon. We know how to do it. You may have to implement it through banking uh, systems so that in some, when someone uses their ATM card and we know where they are. Think about it, Lindsay. No more wallets. You want to pay for your bill? Go like that. Because there's the chip. Just go like that. We'll, we'll do these little hand waves. This will be everything. And then, as I said, the moment you transgress and that chip is turned off, you don't exist anymore. People won't be able to see you on their GPS devices, even though you're looking right at them. They're saying, I'm sorry, Lindsay, this isn't registering. Because without this, without my ability to pick up the metrics, the biometrics, the electronic metrics of you, you don't exist. My bottom line is we have the new technology. We should utilize it and not be afraid to utilize it. All right. Thank you both, Rick and Santita. Great to see you for this week's solutions. And you heard it there, <laughs> folks. I mean. They both agree that we have technology, that we should be welcoming people who come to this country, but it's our responsibility as a government to track them, figure out where they are. Even if we just have a small fraction overstaying, there was only five who were here on overstayed visas who were part of the 9-11 hijacking. It's a threat none of us can ignore, regardless of, of party or political persuasion. And this is how the device looks. And then we plug it that in. That part goes into the brain, This right? part goes into the brain. The light goes into our device, which is, goes directly into the brain. That was the story we did from MIT last year. Its researchers have developed a revolutionary interface, enabling a connection between a human brain and a machine. But Professor Anikeva, in charge of that research, insisted that this technology had purely scientific incline and for now could only be used for studies of the gray matter or injecting medication into ill brain cells. The U.S. military now looks to take the neurotechnology to a completely next level. The Guardian reports that it basically wants to create cyborgs by connecting computers to soldiers' heads. The research is conducted by the U.S. military's Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, or DARPA, which we know too well by these robot videos. The new program is called Neural Engineering System Design, or NESD, which aims to develop an implantable neural interface connecting humans directly to computers. Philip Elvelde, NESD manager for DARPA, said its goal was to upgrade the tools that we have to really open the channel between the human brain and modern electronics. At the moment, human-computer interfaces are able to connect between 100 and 1,000 brain neurons to a machine at the time. DARPA aims to refine this technology to connect individual neurons. This would give much finer control, reduce noise, and speed up communications between a human and a computer. DARPA's website confirms the news, also citing that among the program's potential applications are devices that could compensate for deficits in sight or hearing by feeding digital auditory or visual information into the brain at a resolution and experiential quality far higher than possible with current technology. Considering that DARPA's research has an end goal of military application, it's not hard to imagine where that could be used. But can it? When we filmed the story in MIT, Professor Anikeva laughed off any suggestions that human brain can be controlled by a machine, at least at this point. Can you like sort of program something into no, a uh, we, Not at this point, no, by no means. We, our brain is too sophisticated for us to be able to do something like that at this, uh, and definitely not with the simplistic tools that we have right now. But at the end of the day, the events of the hit movie Matrix, where computers did control a human brain, took place in a distant future. Alexei Roshevsky, RT, reporting from Washington, D.C.